Hi guys, welcome. Um, we have a fun project today. We're doing charm bracelets. Little technique video on how to put your jump rings on, how to use some of our ultra detail flowers right on time for Mother's Day. So it is rainy and cold here in New York and we are still sheltering in place here. Um, that's why I'm coming to you from my home studio. So without further ado, we have Stamp It Forward. So we love the submissions that are coming in. For those of you who don't know that, we've been talking a lot since we have been sheltering place about how to give back to community, how to tell a loved one that you haven't seen in a while that you're doing a great job, still staying connected to the people that you love, um, maybe sending something to a first responder or someone on the front lines or even a grandmother in a nursing home. If you look, uh, um, go on in press art, you could pull down the bar. It'll say hashtag stamp it forward. We're giving you a bunch of different ideas, different quotes, uh, different projects that were made by the impress art staff as long with a lot of you that are watching. So we definitely want and encourage everybody to keep this campaign going. Hashtag stamp it forward. Let us see, we'd love to see what you're doing with your blanks, how you're stamping it forward. Today we are making, my favorite, charm bracelets. So, I know someone asked me about a week ago, what is my go-to? What is my favorite thing? What do I love to stamp? And I love to stamp charms. I like to do talismans. I always have these crazy necklaces on with a bunch of different sayings. It is my thing. So today I'm gonna show you how to make a simple, traditional, but a little bit on the fashion forward, trendy side, charm bracelet. So now at Impress Art, we have these available, just like that. So they're a really nice top with a really nice toggle clasp. And I showed you guys on Wednesday how to make your own toggle clasp, okay? So you could always take this clasp off, put another toggle clasp on that you have stamped as well. If I have a little bit extra time today, I'll go over that with you again. So these bracelets are fantastic. They come in three different tones, okay? This is silver, it comes in silver, it comes in rose gold, and it comes in a gold tone. They're actually really nice. They're very hardy bracelets. So they're not very heavy, but they're not super light. So they're just amount, just the right amount of weight for a bracelet. Um, today I'm gonna be working with the silver, so I'm gonna teach you how to um, maybe texture around the blank, use an ultra detail stamp. We'll even put um, some birth crystals on there. Okay, and if we have time, I'll go over that, um, how to make a toggle clasp. If you don't wanna wear this, how to turn your blanks into closures and findings. I'm gonna bring you over to my block and we're gonna start creating. Okay, so a charm bracelet could be pretty simple, okay? You can go from just regular initials. Um, you can put beads, hang beads off of it. It's pretty much the sky's the limit when it comes to these bracelets. So we're also gonna be working with Willow Uppercase today, which is the signature set, it's uppercase, okay? And we are gonna be working with the Ultra Detail Flower Stamps. Just like that. All right. These are the 12 millimeter letters. Really great to use. Fills up the three fourths disc and just looks very classic. You know, you could also do the first initial and then you could actually write the name out along the curve, which looks so pretty. Okay, so we're gonna start. I'm just gonna put this down. Okay, so we're doing a September, a Morning Glory, which is one of my favorites. Uh, where is that? The Morning Glory, right there. Okay, we have November, which is my birth month. Um, chrysanthemum, okay, and then we have Poinsettia, and that was right here. 
and we'll get started. So we're gonna start, she has three names on this bracelet. All right, so I'm gonna put these there. And we're gonna work with our alchemy blanks today, okay? So alchemy is our tin-based alloy. It is very soft, um, similar to pewter. Okay, it's hypoallergenic, it doesn't tarnish. It's really, it's really great. And we are gonna mark our blanks. We're just going to take a permanent marker and give it a little dot where we want our hole. And then we're gonna come back in with a hole, a screw hole punch. All right, just right there. And once you've marked your blank, you're just gonna come. I want you to screw that down just a little bit. You're gonna put your blank right inside there. And you're gonna see that, do you see that you could see that black hole? See where I'm sliding that? Okay, I'm just gonna line that up and I'm going to screw it down. Now it doesn't take a lot, this is a soft metal. So there's one. Put my holes in. So just make sure to take a really nice grip on that. Twist it. You could untwist it and then you have, there you go. We have all three. So I'm gonna work with my first one. Okay, so my first one belongs to, let's see, John. So John is September and September is our morning glory. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my stamp sticker. Um, yes, there are two hole punches, two screw down hole punches, one with smaller sizes. This is one sixteenth. Okay, this has the smaller ones, and then there's an additional hole punch that has larger holes. Okay. All right, so I want John a little, I want, it, I want him right in the middle, okay? That's where I want my wording because my flower is kind of gonna lay around the left side of my blank. So I am going to put my name right across here, okay? I'm going to write my name on my sticker guide. Okay, John. And I'm gonna utilize the space in between the black and the orange hash marks. I'm gonna open up. My font set. And I'm gonna pull out my J. Now, when you're working with our product, you always want to make sure that the impress art is facing you when you're stamping. That's an indicator mark that you're stamping in the right direction. So as long as that impression, impress art is facing you, even though the J is upside down, you're perfect. So you're going to bring this down. And do you see how I'm lining that up? I have the center of my stamp right in between those two hash marks. So I'm lining my J's up. Okay, now I'm holding it down flat. I'm lightly dragging it, okay? I, when I lightly drag it to that sticker, I feel the ledge of that sticker. That's when I know it's time to stop and it's time to stamp, okay? So with this, this is a four millimeter font. I like to rock these back and forth to get all of the serifs in um, with this font. So I am going to give it a nice tap once, and then I'm gonna bring it back, forward, back, forward, to get, to get all of that, all of those serifs in there, okay? Now with the three millimeter font, depending on the style of the font, you don't have to um, do a tilt and a tap. Um, you can just hit it once. These are rated for stainless. Okay, so um, I'm not over hitting them and I'm working on a soft metal. Again, I'm working with Alchemy on this. 
I'm gonna come in with my O, bring it down, line that up, give it a tap, bring it forward, back, forward, back, and there's my O. Then my H, I'm gonna line that up, lightly drag it and line it up with the H that's on that sticker guide. I'm gonna hit it once, bring it back, forward, back, forward, getting all of those serifs that are on the top and the bottom in my impression. And now I'm gonna go with my N. I'm going to make sure that the impress art's facing me. I'm gonna bring that down, lightly drag it. When I feel that it hits that restriction, that ledge in that tape, I'm going to press down, take my hammer, give it a hit, and then rock it back and forth. And there is my N. So I rock it back and forth because this is a long, even font. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Um, and I wanna get all of my serifs in there. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my sticker off now. Okay, and we're gonna see that we have a bunch of negative space in the bottom. So with this Morning Glory stamp, it sits a little different than the other stamps we've been using. Let me see if I could get that in focus for you guys. There we go. So this is more of a bunch of flowers as opposed to it being a stem like the, let me just show you an example. I used all my flower stamps last night and they are literally not in order and they're all over. So do you see how some of them have a, um, a stem on them? This one is violet that I'm showing you. Um, the morning glory and the poinsettia are more of the buds of the flower, which create a really unique piece when you have a bunch of charms on a bracelet. So all the flowers are basically stylized differently. So what I'm gonna do with this tilt and tap, I'm gonna take my, ta my tape, because I'm not using a sticker guide, and I'm just going to tape the blank to my block, okay? Then I'm going to take my stamp, and now if you see, does everybody see that you can see the bottom of the stamp in your metal? When your metal is this shiny, you actually see the impression in there. Use that as a tool, guys. Okay, you don't um, have to always use a piece of tape. You could always use the, uh, you could always use the reflection of your uh, stamp in the metal. So I'm gonna place that down, okay, where I want it. And I like things hanging. I like um, sometimes. Uh, hanging my stamps off the block, you could choose to, you know, have it, so it so kind of looks skewed and off the blank, but I'm gonna have this one on the blank. Okay, so I am going to really press down with these. The ultra detail stamps um, require a little bit more gusto um, than our uh, regular premium sets do. They have much more detail in them, so tilting and tapping them um, and hitting them on all four sides, like I'm gonna show you now, um, is really going to um, get all of that detail in. So I'm just gonna pull my camera back a little bit so you can see, you could see uh, the technique. So you're going to, again, really anchor your hand on your block and your tabletop. You're gonna take your hammer, you're gonna hit it once. Then you're going to bring it back, forward, side, side, and back to the center. I'm gonna pull it away, and there we go. Okay, and that looks really nice. So I'm gonna pull that up. And I'm gonna put that to the sides. And then I'm gonna come back with my second name. And this I'm gonna do a little bit differently. I'm going to actually stamp around the bottom of the blank. And let's see, who do we have next? We have Julie, and then we have Chuck. Let's see, we're gonna do, 
Let's do chuck next, actually. So again, I'm going to take my sticker guide. And I'm gonna place it on my blank. And I did John up top, so I think I'm going to do Chuck on the bottom. These stickers are really great because you could always move them. So if you don't like where you have your name positioned or your word, you could always move your sticker around. So I'm gonna go right here. Okay, and I'm gonna do Chuck. So we'll do C H U C K. Okay. So again, you want to make sure that the impress art's facing you. You're going to bring that down, lightly drag it. When you feel that restriction in that tape, you're going to hit it once and lightly tap it up, back and forth, just to get all of those serifs in there gonna come back with my H, hit it once, and just rock it back and forth. And my U, let's see, where is my U? It would make a lot of sense if I put my stamps back together in the right, if I put them back in the right places in the case. I'm notorious for doing that. Going to hit it, rock it back and forth, making sure that I have all of those serifs on there. Bring that down, lightly drag it, give it a hit, tilt it back and forth, and then I'm going to come back in with my K. Here we go, flat, lightly drag it, line that up, give it a hit rock it back and forth. All right, so we have Chuck there, just like that, okay? And now I want the poinsettia right above here. This is what the stamp looks like. Let me get that. There you go, you can see all that fine detail in it. And then I'm going to really, I wanna just put a little bit of artistic license with it. I'm going to have some of it hanging off. I'm going to have some of the stamp um, around the hole and I'm going to bear down on it. You definitely want to put pressure on these. Okay. Give it a hit. Rock it front, back, side, side, center. And guys, how beautiful is that? There is the poinsettia. How beautiful, right? Okay, so we have John, we have Chuck, and now we're going to do, let's see, I believe Julie is next. Julie, yep, Julie's next. And Julie is Chrysanthemum. Let me see if I could pull that Chrysanthemum out. I'm just gonna tip this this way and I got the chrysanthemum. So the chrysanthemum is everyone's favorite at work. So this is the chrysanthemum, if we could all see that, okay? And that's what it looks like. So you see there's a lot of detail in the center of that. With this chrysanthemum, has anyone purchased the chrysanthemum yet? that's watching this live today, you definitely want to go a little, when I bring it back to the center, so I, I'm, I hit it once, I tip it um, forward, back, side, side, I bring it back into the center, you definitely want to give that um, chrysanthemum stamp a couple of more hits um, in the center. So I'm going to show you, we're going to actually stamp the flower first with this one. So I am going to use my tape again. Okay. Now it's up to you. You could tape it wherever, you know, you could put your tape at the top. You could put your tape at the bottom. I want to put my stamp 
on the opposite side, because you see that we did, let's see, we did John on the left side, we did Chuck up top, and I think I want to go to my right with my chrysanthemum for Julie. So I am going to place this again. If you could see, let me point this up a little bit. You could see that impression inside that alchemy. Okay, so I want it really nicely and to the side. So I'm putting pressure on my stamp. I'm anchoring my hand, okay? And I'm gonna hit this once and I'm gonna bring it front, back, side, side, and then a couple in the center. How beautiful is that stamp? Okay, so that's the chrysanthemum. Love, love, love the stamp. And now we're working with Julie. Okay, so I think I'm going to, with Julie, I want, I'm gonna stamp vertically. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on how to do that. And because I'm home, I am limited with my sticker guide, so I'm using bracelet. All right, so this is how I'm gonna show you to stamp vertically. Now, you notice that when we're stamping in a straight line, and we have our sticker right here like Chuck was, we're pulling down. With this, we're gonna pull to the side, okay? And I am gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so let's do, hmm. We're gonna do our J, our U. I'm gonna have to move that right over just a little bit to get a little bit more. So let me get you another sticker. See, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, my J, my U, my L, my I, and my E. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to pull to the side, like I said. Before we pull to the bottom, now we're gonna pull to the side. So I'm gonna place it down, follow my letters, see, right on that orange line, and I'm going to push it to the side. Once I push that to the side, I feel that restriction. So I'm gonna hit it once, tap it front, backwards, front, backwards, and there is my J. Guys, it's hand stamping. It's not supposed to be perfect, but I have to tell you, these sticker guides get it get it nearly perfect. So definitely, if you don't have sticker guides, that's one thing you should definitely invest in getting. Now I'm gonna use my U, place that down, lightly drag it. I'm going to hit it once, front, tap it, there's my U. We're gonna do my L. And I went over a little bit. And the I. And it's very hard to stamp with a video camera in front of you, so with the, the phone in front of me on a tripod. So I am apologizing. Okay, so I'm kind of off there. <laughs> I make mistakes too. So we're gonna try that again. We're gonna try that again. I'm going to poke my hole. I'm going to use my screw hole punch, bring that down. And there, there we go. Okay, and we're gonna try this again. We're gonna try it again. Now, when you have blanks that um, you've made a mistake on. It is very, very easy 
to flip that around. I always tell people that when they're stamping, they should always leave a scrap piece on the side because if you're unsure about something, stamp it out. So this um, will definitely come in handy. I think that the font is just too big to go up and down on this blank, but we're gonna try it again. All right, we're gonna try this again. So I'm gonna pull it over on this side. All right, so we're gonna try this again. We're gonna do the J, U, L, I, E. All right, so fingers crossed. We're gonna bring that over. I think I shot, I think it's too long. <laughs> it's Friday. All right, and here is my E. Not bad, not bad. We got it on there. We'll see what it looks like when we color that all in. So again, we're gonna do that chrysanthemum. I'm going to put my tape up top, okay? And I am going to place my flower right off to the side, okay? So it clears my font. I'm gonna press down on it. Give it one big hit. Let me move this for you. And there we have it, just like that. Let's see if we could get that nice and, there we go. That chrysanthemum stamp is amazing. Just like that. Okay, so then we're gonna come back in. And I think I'm gonna dome these. What do you guys think about dapping these? How do you feel about it? I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna go for it. If you have a blank, that you have made a mistake on, you could easily take your texture hammer and give it some texture. And then you could overlap something else on it, definitely. So I'm gonna actually do some ball peen, I'm gonna use that ball peen head, and I am going to give it some texture on the sides. So I'm going to place my ball peen head in my multifunction hammer. I'm going to tighten the bottom. Okay, so I am going to use my ball peen head. I'm going to put my finger where I feel comfortable. Um, you could tape your blank down when you're doing this. I just like to use my finger and I'm just gonna come around and give the edges some texture. I'm gonna go all the way around. Okay, so Julie's done. Then I'm gonna bring John in. I'm gonna go around my edges, go all around. So what do we think? Do we think we wanna dap this? I think we should dap these. It'll give the bracelet a little bit more depth. Bring this back in, go around. there we go. I'm going to dap them. I feel like they just, they need a little something. So I'm going to take my dapping block. I'm going to move my bench block off. And this is our dapping block. This is a fantastic addition to anyone's um, jewelry tool collection. Um, it 
easily forms your blanks. It has a nylon head, so it reduces marring on the disc. It makes it nice. It gives a nice concave look. It just looks really nice. So we're going to do the first one. Um, we're going to do John. And I want it more of like a cupping look. So I'm going to make sure that my impressions are facing up in the cavity. I'm going to take my punch, put my punch right in the center. And I'm gonna take my hammer and I'm gonna give it a couple of nice hits. And you're gonna see how beautiful that looks. Look how that domes it. It's nice, right? It looks beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. We're gonna take Julie. I'm gonna put Julie inside that cavity. Put your punch right in the center of your cavity. Take your hammer, give it a couple of nice hits. And there we go. So guys, this dapping block is really a one and done thing. Um, there are a couple of dapping blocks, uh, another one, a wood one that we have that has a couple of different um, holes in it. This is great because it works with every single one of our blanks, even up to um, two inches. This one is an inch and I believe an uh, one, an inch and a fourth, I believe, is this one, okay? So it just, it domes it, it domes it really nicely. Um, it's any addition to a bracelet, a necklace, a keychain, anything. This, this is actually a really great dapping block, it's a great tool. So let's put Chuck inside there. We're gonna take that punch, put it right in that center, take your hammer, give it a couple of nice hits, and look at Chuck. Beautiful, love it. And that is the poinsettia flower if you're just tuning in. Now we are going to enamel. Make sure when you're, when you're selecting your blanks that it, they have um, impress art on them because you know our tools work with our blanks and um, we make sure that our products are always great for you guys and they work well with our tools. So definitely um, make sure that the blanks that you're using are impress art blanks. So I'm gonna take my enamel marker and I'm gonna fill in my impressions, okay? Then I'm gonna take my paper towel, my dry paper towel and I like to say I'm gonna dab it and make it messy before I make it pretty. All right. Um, if, you're ena if you're having a problem with your enamel and your enamel is not staying into your impression, there's one of two things. One, you haven't, um, the impressions that you stamped aren't deep enough, so um, the enamel's not holding, or you're wiping it off way too soon. So you see how I made it? I dabbed it, I kind of just, and now I'm lightly wiping it. So if you could see there's Chuck and look at that flower, look how nice and detailed that is. We got all that detail in. And that, um, to ball peen the ends of that just gives it that extra shine. Okay, so here's Chuck. And let's do John. All right, so we're gonna color John in. You want to make sure to get into all of your creases. Now, guys, you could always go back in if you've left a piece out and re enamel it. So I'm going to dab it. Okay, do you see that? And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to lightly wipe. All right, and here is John. Okay, with that morning glory is one of my favorite ones. And now we're gonna do Julie. So this chrysanthemum is gorgeous. I'm gonna take my marker, I'm gonna run it over. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm working with Alchemy. The metal that I'm working with is called Alchemy. It's a tin-based alloy. It is hypoallergenic, it doesn't corrode, it uh, corrode, it doesn't turn you green, it doesn't tarnish, it maintains its shine. I like to use it as my stainless steel, my um, sterling silver alternative is what I like to call it. So I'm going to 
lightly dab that flower and my impressions with my letters and I'm going to lightly wipe that away. And there is Julie. Look at that flower, guys. Look at all that detail in there. And I'm gonna actually cheat and restamp this blank until I get it <laughs> until I get it perfect before we ship this out. That's just the perfectionist in me. All right. So now with your alchemy, if you want to shine it up, if you feel that it's dull looking. You could always take, I'm going to open up a new one because the ones that I've been using have been a little bit uh, iffy. So I'm going to open up my buffing block. Now there's two, there are four sides. Two sides have super fine, two sides have fine. I like to start with fine and then move to my super fine. So I stamped a lot on these, so I want to polish up the back of them. So I'm going to start with my fine, and I'm only going to do half so I could show you what it looks like. Okay? So if you could see already, do you see the difference? Does everybody see that line down the center? Between the polished side and the non-polished side? So I use my fine. I'm going to turn it around. Do the other side of my blank. And then I'm gonna come right in with my super fine. And look at that. It takes off little tiny um, minimal scratches that you have or any kind of marring on there. Do we see that? I'm gonna bring that around. Use my other. Do my other side with my super fine. So it basically, oh look, you could even, it's so shiny you could see me in it. <laughs> um, can we use this block on silver? Any other? Yes, you can. So the thing about these blocks, guys, and you never, this holds true with any kind of plated blank that you have. Um, if you use this block and the metal that you're using is plated, it is going to pull the plating off. You want to make sure that when you're working, it's not plated. So it's not silver plated. It's not gold plated. It's not, you know, it's not rose gold plated. You want to stick to raw metals, sterling silver, 14 karat gold, fine silver, brass, copper, aluminum, alchemy, pewter. Okay, we never want to use a buffing block or any kind of sanding uh, abrasive on a pleated blank. All right, so I'm just going to turn this around. And you see that it, you know, the enamel is staying in there. The enamel's not going anywhere. I also like to, I don't know if you guys could see this, but do you see how that's kind of dull? You want to, and this is shiny because I just hit it, you want to definitely, don't forget the outskirts of your blanks. So this is one that I did. This is one that I stamped. Do we see the difference in that? It just makes a really nice, it just shines it up and gives it a really nice finished, finished to any piece that you're working on and, you know, makes it a finished piece of jewelry. So, all right, so there's John. I'm going to do Chuck. How long does the buffing bar last? Um, okay, so I've used mine since we've been home, which is this one. Um, you know, I'm kind of spoiled because I have a bunch of supplies here. So um, I could definitely keep on using this. I'll show you. And it basically still does the same thing. Um, I use my buffing blocks about, um, I want to say for two months, depending on the projects that I'm doing. Um, and if I need to use it a lot or a little, but this is definitely a block for, uh, uh, that I've been using for two months. All right. So I'm going to do my sides, come back to my black, my back. Now you could see that it definitely is taking out tiny imperfections in that metal. If you have a big gash, that is not going to be, um, Using a buffing block is not going to be helping with that. You want to use the, let me grab that. You're going to want to use the, um, the other block that we have, the sanding block, okay? 
And if you wanted to do a matte finish on a blank, so I'm just gonna show you really quick. So there's two sides to this block. There's a coarse and there's a medium. When you're doing the front sides and you want a brushed finish look, you're gonna wanna use the medium. Do not use the coarse. The coarse side is only if you have a piece of metal that's sticking up and you need to knock it down. But with the medium, it leaves, let me show you guys. It leaves a nice satin finish on that. It's a matte satin. Do you see that? And I like it because it's brushed. And you could always take your super fine and then go over it and it shines that up. How beautiful is that? I am partial to, um, to a matte finish. I just happen to like it. So do you see that, the difference? I will polish up this side so you could see the difference between shiny high gloss and a matte finish. Uh, compared to, let's see, Angela, compared to aluminum, the Alchemy is shinier. Is it soft or harder? Okay, so the Alchemy is soft. It's very similar to pewter. Um, Definitely practice, if you just started, Angela, I would practice on aluminum before you move over to Alchemy. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you are doing your sanding for a matte finish, you want to use the medium. You want to use that medium, it's going to give it a really nice matte finish. Does everybody see that? Your buffing block is going to give it a nice shine. All right, your core side is gonna knock down your edges, okay? All right, so we're done with that. Now jump rings. Um, when you are doing jump rings, you want to make sure that you have two uh, pair of needle, no chain nose pliers, okay? Um, don't use your finger and one plier, don't, two, always two, rule of two here. So here's one, here's my second one. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna lay my bracelet out and I'm just gonna space them out. And I think guys will do a Facebook Live um, next week about these buffing blocks. Um, so you're going to put your jump ring through, put it onto your chain, and you're going to bend it back. Now, jump rings, let's talk jump rings for a few minutes, okay? So you're going to take your jump ring and your pliers, okay, one on each end, close to the top there, okay, does everybody see that? And you're going to twist just like that, okay? You never wanna pull your jump ring apart because when you're pulling it apart, you're compromising the metal. And if you're working with something that is plated, you're gonna get a crack in the plating, all right? So you definitely wanna twist, you don't wanna pull apart, okay? I'm going to put my jump ring on right there. And I'm going to put it on my bracelet. Let me move over for you guys. I think the camera moved. And I'm gonna take it, and again, I'm just going to twist it right back into place, okay? And you will hear a little click. If you don't hear a click, it's no big deal. Sometimes I don't hear the click, um, but it will click closed, okay? So that's two. And I'm gonna leave some space on the end because I am going to add a little bit. I'm gonna show you what else you could do. So I like my jewelry to tell a story. How many of us like our jewelry to tell a story? And with charm bracelets, um, of course, it's the story of your family, all right? So what I always like to add is when I do a charm bracelet for myself, I always like to add mine and my husband's initials on that bracelet, okay? 
gonna bring this one over a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, I'm just gonna use a random, random letters. Okay, so I always like everything to tell a story. So right about here, I would hang another disc, okay? And I would do it um, maybe a little bit smaller. And I would just texture around. I'm gonna take a sticker guide, okay. And I'm going to line up my center line right to where my hole is on my blank. And I'm going to put my ampersand there and I'm gonna put, let's say J here and S here. And like I said, this is not for Julie's bracelet. I just want to um, show you another little step that you could do. So again, I'm gonna take my J down. I'm gonna line that up. I'm gonna wrap my stamp back and forth. There's my J. Then I'm gonna do my ampersand. I'm gonna take my S. There we go. So I have my J and my S. I'm gonna take that off and I am going to use my crystal setter and I'm just going to put a little divot on the bottom. I'm all about the bling, okay? And I am going to fill that in with my enamel. I'm gonna dab it, lightly wipe. Then I'm going to set my crystal. I'm gonna get my glue. So I am going to, remember, when you open up your GS Hypo, you don't want to squeeze the container, okay? Because what happens when you squeeze, it just oozes all over and it doesn't stop. So you just want to gently pull that top off. Oops. And I didn't, that's what happens when you don't wipe it off. So you're just going to wait for it to ball and I'm not going to squeeze it. But does everybody see that? Just, let's see if I could get that in. There we go. Okay, you're gonna get that ball of glue and that's what you're gonna work with. You're not gonna squeeze it. You're gonna take a little bit of that glue right off, just like that. And you are going to place it right inside of that divot, okay? Then you're gonna make sure to wipe off your tip and definitely, you could see it's still going. You want to wipe off the tip of your glue. And you want to put your pin back in, okay? Definitely make sure to put that pin back in there, okay? Or else the glue will pull at the tip of that cover and you won't be able to get it off. So then I'm going to take my crystal. I always like to let that glue dry for 24 hours. Um, it sets within a few hours, but I always just like to be just safe. And then I'm just going to put my crystal right inside there. Now, if you have extra glue outside of that, you're gonna wait for it to completely dry, okay? Then you're going to come back with a, um, a little bit of paper towel and a little bit of rubbing alcohol I personally like to use um, a Q-tip with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and I just like to clean around my crystal 
and it takes, the alcohol will take the glue off the metal. You want to make sure that you're, you don't hit your enameled letters with your alcohol because that will take it out. So I always like to add that. I just think it gives a little bit something. And you don't have to dap this one. Um, if you did dap it, I don't suggest dapping um, blanks with a tag on top. Do we see that? Okay. I would just leave it alone. I like the difference of it. We're going to have to reach out to Julie to find out her husband's initial. Because I definitely don't want to send her one with a random initial on it. So I'm going to put my jump ring on and I'm going to attach that right onto my bracelet. Okay. And again, you want to take your pliers, one on each side and twist it back into shape. You never want to pull your metal apart. You want to lightly twist it and then twist it back, okay? Pulling a jump ring apart um, is gonna compromise the metal. Since we have questions about the crystals, I'm just going to walk you through it. Let me move this off my block. So with your crystal setter, you wanna make sure that you are flat, okay? And you're gonna hit and just move it around a little bit. I move it around because I just wanna make sure that my divot is nice and deep and evenly flat. Okay, see the bottom of that? I wanna make sure that I'm not flat. Okay, so it's not hot fix crystals. Um, they are just regular flat backs. The crystals kit comes with three different size crystal setters and it comes with three different uh, crystal size crystals in it. So I'm just gonna open that up. Me, oh, I got two. Sorry, I always have crystals all over the place. So, okay, so let's pull out my GS Hypo again. Okay, here we go. So again, with the GS Hypo, you don't want to Squeeze your tube. You wanna wait until it pools. See, I have a ball of glue already. I wanna take my tip of my applicator. I wanna place that inside my divot, just like that. I'm going to clean off my tip and put my applicator right back in, slide that closed. Then I'm gonna take my crystal and you can use a pair of tweezers. Let's see if I could grab that. I actually don't have my tweezers handy, so I'm going to use a pair of round nose pliers. Let's see if I could make this work just to show you. Okay, not working. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm gonna place that right inside that divot, just like that. There we go. So let's say you're stamping your name on your disc. You want to make the hole for your crystal, okay? Then you could, then you're gonna dap it, if that's what you wanna do, then once it's dapped, then you're going to set your glue in your crystal. So we learned on Wednesday how to turn your blanks into a toggle clasp. So all I did here, guys, was I took a washer, I put my hole in it, okay? And then I took my, the stamp right here, my morning glory stamp, and I just did it repeated, I re was very in a um, repetitive pattern all around it. Do we see that? And I took my strip, I put a hole in it, okay? And then I just did my flower pattern on the end. So just like my toggle clasp here goes in, comes out, and just hangs out there, your blanks could be used to do the same thing. So I would attach this to the end of my bracelets, okay? I would come in here, 
bring it out, and it would basically just create a clasp just like the toggle clasp did once it's attached to your chain. So do you see that? So you could basically, you could stamp your findings as well. We have a bunch of, we have a lot of different shapes that could be made into a toggle clasp. You could even put, you know, you could put someone's name on the back or how precious would that be if you um, gifted someone a toggle clasp or a necklace and um, even put your maker's mark on it or stamped love in the back of that. It's just little added touches that really mean so much to people when they receive your pieces. So it is, that's a one inch, um, one inch washer. And then here are the strips. And then you just wanna use a couple of jump rings. So basically with your charm bracelet, it would replace your ends and really give it a really pretty uh, look to that. So thank you for joining us today. Um, we went over tilting and tapping of ultra detail stamps. We went over using the signature Willow font, which is an uppercase. Um, I didn't do such a hot job of showing you how to stamp horizontal, but we'll, we'll try to revisit that next week. Um, we did some crystal setting and I showed you how to use your blanks in different ways. So like the toggle clasp. So, and we covered dapping. So I think we got a full video today for you guys to go back to if you're ever having questions about any of the techniques that we showed you today. Definitely, guys, remember you could watch these replay, replays on Facebook. You could also visit our YouTube channel um, that has a bunch of information. Make sure that you utilize the Inspiration Gallery on ImpressArt.com. Um, if you go uh, on ImpressArt.com, definitely, definitely uh, sign up for our newsletter because that's going to get you, we're not going to bombard you, but that's going to give you new tutorials. It's going to tell you when we have new product coming out. It's going to let you know when we're going live or if there is a class that we're teaching in your area. Um, we do have pinners coming up that we'll be teaching classes out. So we would love to see some of you guys. And if you are already going to pinners, come up and say hi. We would love to meet you. Um, inspiration. Me and Jen work really hard. I give Jen the products. Jen is my... I wouldn't know what I would do without Jen. So Jen writes the... Um, tutorials for you guys. So definitely check out the Inspiration Gallery. Definitely check out Stamp It Forward. Um, I want to get this move, movement started. I, I really, we've had such an overwhelming response to it that we just want to keep it going. Um, there's a PDF on there and I was actually visiting there this morning. Um, you want to click on that PDF and it's going to give you a bunch of different because sometimes when we're stamping things, and I find this, I know even the classes that I teach, like if there's one thing I could tell you, come to class prepared, make sure you know what you want to stamp on your piece of jewelry. Because you'd be surprised that even I'm like that now. I sit at my block and I look at my bracelet for a good 10 minutes before it comes to me as to what I want to put on that bracelet. So Jen took that thinking, um, Jen and, and our marketing gurus took that thinking out of it and she compiled a list of really amazing stamp it forward inspirational light-hearted quotes that you could put on bracelets or jewelry so you want to look at that list because i looked at that list today and it's a great list of ideas for you know quotes that you could stamp on your bracelets or plant markers or whatever you're doing to stamp it forward so again make sure you sign up for the newsletter definitely take a look at the inspiration gallery because it's basically everything I'm showing you, just you don't hear me talking. So sometimes that's a good thing. Um, and I want you guys to have a wonderful, magical weekend. Um, if you're sheltering in place still, I'm with you. We're in this together. This is the time to craft. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, you know, my stamp stuff is in my closet or it's in the corner of my, of my craft room. Now we're giving you all this knowledge, Jen and I. Now it's time to use your tools. Use your tools. Don't be afraid of them. If you're having an issue with them, send a private message. 
I need Jen and Rita to go over dapping. I need Jen and Rita to go over bracelet bending. We're gonna try to do those crystal rivets for you guys. So thank you very much for joining Jen and I and everyone at Impress Art appreci appreciates you. And definitely don't forget to hashtag us at stamp it fo hashtag stamp it forward. We wanna see what you're making. We wanna see what you're doing and how you're staying uh, connected to your community. Definitely take a look um, of the different projects on impressart.com that people have made and just get inspired. Get inspired, start stamping, start stamping it forward, and we will see you guys on Monday. Thanks so much.